Welcome back to Dial Remodels. So in this video I'm going to be doing a full carbon fibre shell. Um, so I'm going to show you my method for doing that. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So the first stage I'm going to do is to prepare the masks for all of the panels. So if you've already noticed I've got some um, masking on the underside because I've already painted the, the roof and the A pillars and everything. Um, so I've masked those up and I'll just leave the masking on there. And I've painted it with black base coat, which as you can see isn't perfect, um, but it doesn't need to be for this purpose. All I need is a black base. So if there's a gap or anything or problem with part of the decal, it doesn't show through. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do to start with is get a big piece of masking tape. Um, and I'll line that up over the roof. And burnish it down. I'm not worrying too much about the, uh, the lumps in the roof because they will get sorted out with the carbon fibre but what I want to do as much as possible is get it smooth on the edges because then I've got a good template for the, um, for the decal. So I'm going to use different size tapes depending on what I'm doing and where I'm overlapping it. So next one I'm going to do is along that roof line there. And the approach that I'm going to take with this as well is to do individual um, panels and make them all up separately on the masks, then transfer those to the decal paper and try and line them up. So I'm just going to go around the whole bodywork with the same process and then I will come back when it's all masked off. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it uh, all covered for the most part now. So it's not overly tidy, but it doesn't need to be. What's important is that it's all covered. So the next step is fairly critical. So what we want to do is make sure you've got a sharp knife. And then we want to very carefully trim around it. So, as I said before, I've got, as you see there, the window line going around there where I've burnished it in. I'm just going to very carefully just trim around there. And then I've got the line going down there. And at this stage, a sharp knife, preferably a brand new blade, is what you need. Because the last thing you want to do is slip or go in the wrong place or anything. So, I'm just using my fingernail to score where I want to cut. And then I should be able to remove that. Do the same one on the back line. And then what I've got is where this, well, what would it be, a gutter run. I'm going to cut along there. Same on this side. And then the 
same as the doors, so I've got the line there, where the door goes. And I'm going to use each of these panels for um, their own separate, or separate mass template. And then, once I've gone round everything, then I have a nice, in fact I'll do it there, where the rubber seal will be. Yeah, each, each panel then I will have a separate, uh, separate mask for, um, to make it easier and I will do it in sections like that. So I'm going to carry on going around all of the the body panels, getting them all cut out and trimmed around like that and then uh, I'll be ready for and masking all. all. Okay, so I've gone around and uh, cut all of these lines now where I want them and there's a couple of little gaps where it hadn't burnished down properly, which as I said at the time when I was doing it, it it does, you need to get it burnished as well as you can, but um, inevitably on such a complex shape, things like this are going to happen. So a little quick tip, if you get a marker pen, and I'm just going to mark along where there's going to be gaps. And then when I come to cut the, um, the actual decal, where I've got a marker pen on the template, I can give it a little bit extra um, so that there's an overlap, so it's not gonna it's not gonna end up having a gap there on the final piece. So just a little quick tip there. So a little bit down on that bottom corner. So here we go. Um, see how good a job of cutting I've done. So I need to make sure I get the the second part of the masking tape as well where I've got overlaps. And what I should have ultimately is a big jigsaw piece that uh, the decal. So what I've chosen to do, I've got a, I decided to overlap the door on the front edge so I don't need to worry too much about that being neat on that edge because it's not going to be uh, be that visible on the final thing so that's my front door. So I'm going to take all of these off, keep going, but you can see how I've been building up the panels. Um, so I'll go do these. I'm going to label them as well, um, just in case I have any problems so I know what's what. And then once it's all unmasked, I will come to the next bit. Okay, so I've got all of this unmasked now. And as you can see, I've transferred those masks onto my carbon fibre decal sheet. So I've tried as far as possible as I can to keep the orientation right so I've got the roof, the boot lid, the rear bumper all in the same orientation, the same as the doors, same as all of the window frames which you'll probably notice I've broken up into three pieces per door window um, purely to save space on the on here so otherwise I'd have like a big section with the big holes in it and it's just wasting decal doing that, so uh, I opted to do it this way instead. Um, same with the arches, I've split those, mainly because there's a split on the arch there, so um, I thought I'd follow that panel line with that. So, um, so yeah, there we go. One thing that I was going to point out is on the rear bumper, because it's a complex shape, what I've chosen to do is, I'll do it as one piece, but what I've done 
is I've put relief cuts. So you can see here, um, it's like a, a Y shape in there and that one as well. Um, just as a relief cut for getting the shape round. Um, I made a start on doing the, the front section as well. So that's the bonnet and that's the front bumper and again, I've got the relief cuts in there so that it's got the shape. So I'll show you that one on this video as well. Um, possibly to um, to go around that because that's obviously very complicated shape that one so uh, so yeah so first thing I'm going to do is start cutting the pieces out so again very sharp blade and I'm just going to very carefully follow the line around And this would be the same process that you'd use if you were using um, Scale Mode Sports decals for uh, pre-made pre templates that they do. Um, that you have to cut them out like this. So. That's the uh, the roof almost done. Just a very little bit there that's caught. So once I've got my roof off the uh, decal cut out, and I want to remove the masking tape. You've got to be careful with this because I've cut the decal. If you're not careful, you could end up peeling the decal with it, especially on the edges when you're trying to uh, to get at it. So I can go on my water for a second. I'll just put on the bench there. And then I'm going to use some microset for this. going to take a minute for it to be uh, usable so you can see as well I've left I've still got that mask on the inside I've got no reason to remove that it's not affecting anything on this so uh, so I'm leaving it as it is so it's starting to come free now so I'll get my microness set and give it a few coats on there. Another thing, make sure that you get the orientation right. It's wider at the front than it is on the rear on this one. So, Otherwise, when you've done all of that work and placed it and positioned it, you might find you're going to have to rework something and get more problems doing that. So. so this is the same process that I've shown you previously on carbon fibres decals. So when it first lays down it's obviously got wrinkles in it. Um, what I'm going to do that's under there has got somewhere to go and the set of solutions can work into it. So onto my hair dryer which I'm going to go and uh, I might go off camera a little bit so just bear with me. So it doesn't need loads of heat to start with and then we'll just slowly start manipulating it. 
and it looks like I've got something underneath the decal, so I'm just going to very carefully pull that back and see what's there. It doesn't appear to be anything now, so pull that back down. At the moment, because I'm still using the microset, I've not gone on to any microsole. It's, although it's a bit softer, I can still touch it with my fingers if I'm careful, so. It's okay to work around that, uh, that raised bit. I need to get that big crease out the centre there. So I'm just going to keep stretching that to get it over, over these bits, because that's where... That's what's causing the creases, is these bits here. So I'm just going to keep working it a bit. Obviously, we need to make sure the position of the decal stays where you want it as well. So, a little bit of fiddly work. Because obviously, the roof is not a flat surface, it goes in every single direction, so... Another one there, so... Just keep a slip on that one as well. I'm going to give it some more heat. So you can see the starting to uh, smoothen out now. So it's still very soft. I've still got to be careful. But what I'm doing is just pulling my fingers apart very slightly on the decal. I don't want to rip it, but just enough to stretch those creases out. And again, I'm just going to keep working them around. dry now so I'm just put more microset on there. Just so otherwise it snags the decal and then uh, it'll damage it which I don't want so just going carefully, slowly, methodically. Carefully with a brush, just try and tease that out. Give it a bit more heat. So I think for the initial bit, I think I'm happy with that. Just make sure it's tucked around the, the gutter in that uh, that edge there. At the top of the doors. 
to watch the truck tire bubbles in there. So, uh, yeah, so that'll do for the microset stage. So, I'll go over it with the microsaw now. And this is where it'll start to um, start to actually melt the decal in when you don't want to be sticking your fingers in it because you'll damage it at this point. So just looking which way direction the pattern goes so that if you do end up with any creases try if possible to get them to line up in the line of the pattern because they'll be less obvious if you can't avoid it get them to line up with a pattern obviously if you can you want to get rid of them but sometimes it's easier said than done I'm not putting any pressure on these, I'm just coaxing it so the decal goes where I want it to go. Actually, these raised bits need a bit more attention, which is to be expected. But they're getting there. So I think I'm going to leave that to set for a bit. Um, so the reflection on camera is picking up some of the water, but. It is flat so I'll let that dry and then uh, before moving on to the next bit because obviously I don't want to be sticking fingerprints in it damaging it or anything while I'm working over here and put my hand under there it's not a good idea so patience is key with this so um, I'll leave it there for there for now and then uh, come back in a bit okay so this is where I'm currently at so um, it's still a little bit soft but I can touch it if I'm gentle um, so while I was letting that uh, settle I decided to do move on to the boot lid so I've not recorded this bit on camera but uh, that's where it's at so again it's the same, same method of working slow and methodically um, so the next bit that I was going to do is the window frames. So I broke these up into three sections. So if I start at the front piece, I'll get that in some water to soak. And then that's the top bar. And then this is the uh, 
back part of that window frame. So uh, give those a second to soak. Right, so um, first bit I'm going to do is this front part. So what I'll do, the same process as before, is I will put some microset just on there. Once that one's near enough in place, I'm going to overlap that one. how that actually overlaps there it's not great but uh, for what I want it should be sufficient on on the real car or a Car, real carbon fibre car because this isn't a real one um, certain sections would be made up separately anyway um, I don't know about the window frame but uh, certainly the individual doors would be so it wouldn't all line up so let's move those bits out of the way and then I will give it a bit of heat If I'd have put a bit of, well, if I'd have uh, made this as one piece, then obviously this would all line up perfectly. But you can see on that back section there, it's uh, it's not even close. Which I was trying to. Uh, be a bit careful as I was doing the orientation on the decal sheet as I was laying the masks down to um, try and make sure that would be the case but uh, obviously it's not quite worked as I as I planned if I do it like that it's uh, getting a bit better Yeah, now it's starting to line up a bit better now, isn't it? Obviously, the excess where there's overlap, I can trim off. But uh, for now, I'm just going to do it as 
as well as I can on the uh, the overlap, so it's not not so noticeable. This is where your patience comes in. I'm just trying to get that bit in the light for the reflection so I can see where the pattern's going to uh, see if it's lined up as well as it can be. That's a bit better. That's the rear joint, and got the French one over here. So there's overlap, and it's uh, I think it's better to give some heat, let it uh, settle down a bit, and then see where we're at. Just manipulate it a little bit. I think that's going to be okay. So when I cut these out, I did um, I did cut them a little bit wide to allow for for some overlap because obviously when I'd got them on the sheet before, when I showed you, they were all over the place in different sections of the sheet and all sorts. So um, I will go through the same process with the microsol as I showed you before, um, and then let that dry, and then trim off the other bits, and then we'll move on to the next section. Okay, so those window frames are all done now. So I've gone around and finished them off. I've also done this uh, back panel as well. And the same on the other side. So now I'm going to move on to the doors. So I thought I'll start off and show you this, uh, this one on the front because it's a little bit of a complex shape. So you've got, um, you've got this curve here and then it obviously comes out there and then obviously the handle to uh, to negotiate around as well. So I've got my decal ready. So the first thing I'm going to do, is, uh, as I did before, was put some micro set on there. And then I'll get the decal and position that. Easier said than done. It's quite a big decal, and obviously the micro set helps it to stick. So right. So for the door handle, I'm going to line it up with that crease there, and sort out these main large panels, and tuck that into that corner. I'm going to give it some heat and then see where we're at. Drop my brush. Don't want to do that. Just looking at this 
crease down here as well because uh, not it not only is that folded out there's also a curve there as well that we need to take into account so what I'm going to do is again with a sharp knife is I'm just going to put a slit underneath where the door handle would be and that allow me to manipulate that a bit better just get some of those air bubbles out I can work that more as we go try and get that air bubble out of there get all the creases out He's getting there. So, give it a bit more heat and a bit more set. The thing we're using the setting solution at this point rather than the salt as well is if you've got overlapping areas, it allows you to trim them off and tidy them up. Um, and it can be removed quite easily. Once you put the salt on and it starts melting the decal, then it gets a lot harder to remove it. So up here, for instance, when uh, when I was doing the door bits, there was some overlap over the top. Um, so I was just able to remove that quite easily. So what we don't want to do is end up tearing the decal. So being a little bit careful where there's trapped air bubbles to um, just not allow any uh, any tears to appear so I'm not worried too much about what it looks like down here because that's gets covered up by the bonnet section I'm not displaying this one with a the bonnet off at any point so I'm not worried about that obviously if I was I'd trim that off and uh, and do that as a separate piece as well so you see it's taking shape and getting where we want it now so give it a bit more heat going to do is change my blade because that one's going blunt. You saw it pulling it a little bit there. That's because the blade's getting blunt. Which obviously at this point you really don't want. So fresh blade in there and then as you can see it now cuts nicely. So be prepared if you're going to take on a job like this. Make sure you've got plenty of blades and don't be afraid of using them. So, so that's where I'm going to go with the with the micro set. So I'll coat that with the microsol as I did with the other pieces, get that to properly soak in. Um, and I'm going to go around and do the other panels as well and I'm going to do this back panel as well the complicated bit on this is that inner lip there if uh, if you can see it on camera um, it's got that uh, recessed bit so but again working the same way as I did in this in this corner down here that won't be a problem otherwise it's a fairly flat part got a couple of raised bits but again same as the wood door handle We'll get around that. Um, as for the door, the arches being separate aren't going to be an issue. So I'll come back at the point where I'm ready to do the arches. So next bit will be all the doors and the rear panels will all be done. So as I've been going round, um, I realised it was a little bit of a difficult, sort of more tricky point on this uh, rear corner because that's a bit of a 
funny shape. So I thought, after I've done the doors, so there you go, that's that side done, that, all that side done. So I'll show you this um, rear quarter and how I approached that. So it's basically the same process as before. Um, so let's get rid of that mark that's on there. So lots of microset and heat and manipulating it to get it to go where we want it. part so far is um, is fairly straightforward. I've just got a bit of masking tape on the corner there I just want to get rid of. So yeah, that's um, that's fairly straightforward as you've seen me do previously. Um, I keep catching the camera with the brush, so apologies for that. Um, so like I said, it's that it's that corner I want to show you, so I'll start getting that settled down. So. Got all the moisture from underneath it as well. It's the same process I used on the roof. We're just sort of rolling it away from the corners and uh, and yeah, just to get it to go where I want it. So yeah, as you can see on that corner now, I've got this big crease, and if I flatten that, then the crease comes round here, and I've obviously got the bit down the bottom there. So this is what I'm going to be working on this section to uh, to get it settled down as best as I can with minimal creases. So it's basically working from the flat point into the into the corners, and every time you see a crease appear, just gently rolling over it to try and remove it a bit. So I'm going to give that some more heat. So you might think I'm holding it on there for a while, but I'm using my hand to determine how much heat it's actually getting so it doesn't get too hot. But we want it a fair amount of heat in it because that's what helps soften the decal and helps it to conform to where we want it. So, got, I don't know if you can see there, I've got a panel line, so where you've got that one there, I've got another one just here, um, so I'm only interested in going up to that point, beyond that it's going to get removed anyway, so I don't really care what it looks like after that point. And the same way we've got the light cluster, past the light cluster point. Is uh, it's pretty relevant, but I do need to make sure that it goes up to it. Whereas at that point, it's not. So carefully use my tweezers just to pull that up a bit because I want it to actually meet where the lights fit otherwise I'll end up having a gap which I don't want. So be careful as well if you're doing it like this using the end of the brush that you don't use the metal part. Because 
because that will rip the decal. Which isn't what you want either. brush gets too dry again it'll start to pull and then won't get what you want Pretty much there now. Inevitably, doing something like this, there are going to be potential creases that you can't get rid of. We need to do as best as we can to tease them out. So it's just one little one there on that top corner. So what I'm going to do again with the sharp blade. I'm just going to go off camera a little bit for this, I think, to uh, line it up. So what I'm saying about just using Microsoft at this point is it allows me to then remove that bit of the decal where there's an overlap without really damaging it or affecting anything else. So I'm going to do the same on that bit now. I'm just going to put a couple of slits in that just to help it to uh, around the corners a bit easier. So once that's that's all settled down properly, then uh, move on to the microsole. So I'm just going to trim that top piece up there as well, where there's a bit of an overlap. Just um, just tidy up in the same way that I did on that back piece, because that's um, that upper part is dry. I need a new blade before I do that. So I'll do that off camera. But yeah, before because that part's dry and soaked in microsol and everything, that's okay. So um so yeah, so I'll finish off that back panel and then uh, I'll move on to the bumper. Okay, now on to the arches, not the bumpers as I said a second ago. So I've done that rear panel as well, um, got all that sorted. Uh, so that's nice and smooth and laid down. So um I've got my decals ready to go, so again, start off with the micro set and then get the decal, which is just here off camera, and then I'm going to put it where I need it. So I'm going to start off getting it lined up with that uh, door line there, the door jam. And then uh, go from there. So I've got them both ready, so I'm doing them both at the same time. 
whether that turns into a good idea or a bad idea, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll find out. So for now I'm just going to loosely position them where they need to be. process as before. I need to make sure it stays at that bottom section as well. Which it seems to want to pull away whenever I start manipulating it. So at the end of the day if I end up with any gaps anywhere that need something doing that seems to be unavoidable. And I'll deal with those and I'll, uh, I'll show you how I do that. It's almost like that, bottom part doesn't, uh, doesn't line up and isn't part of the same template I use. But Once I've got the heat in, I can start manipulating it. There's obviously a fair few creases in that section. If you look on there, on that side, there's a line there. So I'm going to use that as my uh, point to work from. So. One side I'll go in one direction and the other side I'll go in the other direction. And that should be the, uh, the best way to work with it. Get that out of the way. could probably get away with splitting that in half again but to be honest I want this arch to um, to line up properly so I'm not going to do that I said about in the pre earlier that uh, if you've got any creases with this being a f carbon fiber that goes in a straight line in one direction if I get a crease to line up in the same direction it will be less visible so that's what I'm going to do on that edge there and then I'm going to Get the rest of it to settle down and then use that um, that line there like I said as my uh, as my working point so I'll just go into this decal a little bit give that one the same attention This is one of the things that I love about the scale motorsport decals is they're so easy to manipulate and work with that I've got some confidence that I can do a job like this with them without overly having to worry.
especially when it comes to the point of putting the microsol on it'll set down really nicely so I'm just going to give it some more heat That's looking quite nice now. I'm not going to worry about what it looks like underneath the arch because that's not really going to be visible. Side's more important because your eyes will get drawn to that more. Like I said, on that last section, some creases are going to be inevitable due to it being such an overly complex shape. And it's about doing the best that we can with it. So I'm just going to put a couple of relief cuts in there. Once the microsol's on this, it'll be um, it'll be looking a lot better. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, where I've got that overlap, I'm just going to trim that back a bit. that piece and he shouldn't be visible and go through that step so I'll 
I'll do the same. I'm just going to put a slit down there. And the same in that section there. We don't need this bit that's overlapping. And then we can tidy that edge up. Right, so I'm going to move over to the microsaw now. So uh, I'll leave that for a little bit and uh, I'll come back later on once I've applied the saw and it's all settled down. Okay, so as you can see on this bit now, it's very, very nearly finished. So it's still a little bit soft on some of the center solution on some areas. So I've still got to be careful and gentle with it. But that's the, that's the nose section done. And, uh, just needs a little bit more sort of setting solution in certain areas like that. But uh, I've still got a couple of bits of trim to do. But for the most part that's done. Um, bumper's a work in progress at the moment. Um, and then obviously the body shell is all done. So last bit that I was going to show you was um, touching up. Inevitably, if you're doing something like this, there's, um, there's a chance that part's not going to line up quite right or you're gonna get a tear or something. And this is exactly what's happened here, that uh, there's a bit of a gap in there. So what I've done is I've got a bit of decal um, from one of the spare bits, which I've cut so that it matches the orientation of the piece I want to match up. So very carefully, I'm just going to put it in there and then position it over the gap that I've got and then just make sure that the pattern lines up with, uh, with the rocks already there like that so once, um, once that's settled down and um, the microsols applied and then it's clear coated that patch won't be seen so, um, so yeah, there you go. That's um, as far as I'm going to go in this video. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.